if you're looking for some straight-up marketing advice that's super chilled and also a bit of a laugh, then grab yourself a drink and get ready for Marketing and Margaritas, a podcast that makes marketing entertaining. Brought to you by Rebel Nation, direct from regional Queensland. Hi and welcome to Marketing Margaritas. I am joined by Vicky Smith and today we're going to be talking about what actually is marketing and how to do it well. So as another lifer in the marketing game, I have found that um, I remember even doing my degree and my lecturer, um, he was this really nice guy, but he struggled to really articulate what marketing was because there's PR and there's comms and there's advertising and all this kind of stuff. and. It's just marketing just seems to be this nebulous kind of overarching thing. Whereas if you're a comms person, you think marketing is part of comms. And if you're in advertising, then marketing is part of advertising. Whereas I'm marketing, so I think it's the overarching one. And I just really want to have a conversation with you. Um, obviously, we've worked on all kinds of different projects together. And we've probably got enough content between conversations to have recorded this a million fucking times <laughs> in a million different ways. But I thought, let's just actually do it on camera for a change. So yeah. thanks very much for joining. Me. Welcome, Jade. Thanks for having me. Cool. All right. So before we get into that stuff, mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about you because I know you pretty well, but mm -hmm. I can't assume that everyone else does. So what first got you into marketing? How did that, how did those first steps happen for you? Um, I went to uni to study a science degree. I so, did not know that. Yeah, so I have a science degree. Um, oh, you did get I it too. I did, but at the same time, I Useful. thought, you know what? Mm, time well spent. Let's do a double degree in business in case I ever want to own my own because my parents did. Right. Um, um, and of all the business disciplines, and this is probably how I know I'm life in marketing, I could have done HR, could have done finance, could have done, but I said, you know what, that marketing one is probably the most useful. Mm -hmm. So if I want to have my own business doing sports science, mm -hmm. I'm going to do a business degree that majors in marketing, marketing because mm -hmm. that's the one that will help me in business. Mm -hmm. Little did I know that I was actually naturally better at marketing than I was ever at science. Does and a science so, degree come in useful at um, all? When I started teaching Pilates, like yeah, okay. 10, 15 years after I did the degree, yep, it's probably the only time I've used it. Um, but I finished it. I will say the only thing, and it probably um, made me a better marketer, mm. was the, the research, the data. Being able to actually read yeah. huge amounts of information, yep. filter it for what's useful. Market research and, yep. yeah, yeah. and psychology. So I mm. actually started doing a lot more psychology-based sciencey subjects mm -hmm. so much than physiolo physiology. Um, and because marketing is all about consumer well, psychology, and that's it's it, behaviour, it's those. So... I was going to go into a dual degree for law and psychology yes. because I could talk a lot and psychology was so interesting. So I did some subjects around psych and everything. Mm. And I think that's the same thing. It's it kind is. of like, that's one of the reasons that draws me to marketing is that whole like cerebral right. strategic yeah. part of yeah. it. As much fun as like it is to fucking kick ass at whatever you're doing, mm. you know, actually thinking something through and figuring it out and coming yeah. up with a plan is like super fun. One of my favorite concepts is, um, and I don't think I created it, but I, I've crafted it into one that I've used a lot, um, particularly with training small businesses in marketing, um, and it's a think, feel, do. So it, that's mm -hmm. all psychology. Mm -hmm. um, marketing really is about influencing what people think mm -hmm. about you, about your brand, about your business. You're not going to do something until you to think oh, about it, yeah. how it makes you yeah. feel, and that then spurs you to action. Correct. So mm -hmm. we influence thoughts, hopefully positively, which mm -hmm. influences positive feelings towards mm -hmm. a brand you know and then the doing then is far more positive so we buy something we refer someone we do so if we can influence that psychology it then creates we, the action yeah it creates yeah. the action so mm -hmm. um but in, inversely if our customers or or our stakeholders have negative thoughts mm. that will influence negative feelings and then the action isn't what we want them to do mm. or it's different to what we want them to, to do. do yeah so think feel do is kind of one of those key concepts i think that really underpins marketing because it's essentially human behavior we're influencing positively human behavior and psychology and that's what i think i think people just jump straight to the where should i be yeah. where should i be yeah where you know what should i be doing and it's like 
oh man, like I know that I'm a bit of a painful person in that I, I'm not very good at just like jumping into something. I'm like, no, 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 lay foundations, Skip then you get to do that. Yeah. And I, cause I, can't, I have to start from the ground up. Yeah. I can't just drop in at the top level Absolutely. sort of thing. I'm exactly the same. I say all the time. I'm cause not I hate a, doing stuff that's wasteful. Yeah. And I'm not, a, I say I'm not creative. I'm not a creative marketer. Oh, yeah. I'm good at creative thinking, strategic thinking, knowing whether something's right, like really drilling it down to understanding the, who, who the customer is and that, that deep in Insight, mm. but I'm not so great at the other end you yeah. know like if that's where I'll hand over and mm. someone to attach their big idea to those foundations because mm. if, if a big idea yeah, like doesn't here's have the strategy piece, here's all yeah. the thinking and, yeah. and whatnot behind it now connect those dots and make a yeah. wow well and it top. will land so much better it will sing that big <laughs> idea results. will sing to the person that it's it's designed for because they fundamentally have been at the center of of that whole development. Right, I'm getting Yeah, it yeah. didn't go idea backwards. I'm a I'm a ground up kind of Yeah, kinda the same. And I, I feel like I must annoy the living crap out of people with it, but I'm like, <laughs> I cannot physically operate any other way. Because yeah. I feel like I'm cheating someone if I don't do yeah. it rock that like way. that full process. Yeah, okay. So when it comes to okay, so you started off you know, I guess that's a similar to me. It's like well, I kind of accidentally come across it and yeah. was like, oh, I fucking love I'm this. Good, this is maze balls. Yeah. Why are you still in marketing? Why is comms and marketing still I your thing? I think we just said off camera, it's just in you, you mm. know, and, and anyone who's a um, St. Patrick's um, college graduate of my era, um, brother Tom Higgins was a, you know, a, a brother at the school and, and our kind of guidance counsellor. And I just remember him saying, if you like something and you're good at it, do it. Mm. And I liked it, what I was learning. It was mm. clearly better at it than other things. So I was like, well, this must be it for me. me. And I think I'm still in it. Like my career is vastly different from oh. where I started. Like yeah, I yeah. started selling shoes, like marketing shoes. <laughs> um, and here I am now in regional economic development. But the skills, the transfer of skills has been incredible. You know, mm. to go from that to this in 20 something years, um, the skill set is it's still the same mm. i'm just applying it to a different audience essentially um and that ability to go through my career and have the same set of skills but mm. apply it to such vast different audiences um for different applications like be, so yeah. yeah and that's it's a, a little bit of a superpower now to be able to just and you'll do it because you run an agency you have a variety of clients um when i went from being client side into more of that agency style role that superpower really strengthened because you have to. It's like one minute you're on, you know, this, and then the next minute it's something completely and utterly different. Yep, today I'm an electrician and then half an hour later, later I'm a dentist. Correct. But, again, the same core set of skills, mm. the strategies, the way that you approach something remains relatively the same. And I think that's it. I think we're quite similar in that sense of also having our process, our methodology, yeah. and that's what, you know, like as much as you are, like, it is a creative industry if you actually have a really rock solid process for things mm. then you can pretty much not guarantee but like you know what you're going to get yeah. out at the end yeah you lift and shift and um it doesn't mean that it's it's identical it can't be it's different it's audiences. always it's different. different yeah different problems to solve yeah. different products to sell mm. um but that part but the steps of it, are the same you man. don't have to recreate it the wheel every no. time no no yeah so much better okay so that's why okay. i'm still in it yeah. so I just also, I think, you know, you're, like, again, we're, I think we're the same age. Well, I think similar. I'm a little older than you, similar. <laughs> okay, similar yeah, age. Okay. Um, I, when I was doing my degree and everything, it was, like, digital was just starting to come out and whatnot. But, so I didn't actually do, um, like, Google Ads or anything mm -hmm. at uni, mm -hmm. but it was just, like, I remember joining Facebook when I was procrastinating from uni or procrastinating from something. Um, maybe that's a little bit too early. Maybe it was something else I joined. Anyway, I, but it was just coming into effect and yeah. stuff. And so then when I first started in marketing, there was like, you know, like um, writing radio scripts and all that mm -hmm, kind of mm -hmm. stuff. But it was predominantly like writing a website and being like, what even is SEO? Because yeah. didn't learn that at school. Yeah. And so it's just been continual learning this whole time sort of thing. Yeah. Yours is pretty similar-ish. Yep. So when you think now about like 
and again, I'm, I'm just talking about channels and like we talk mm. about how much we love the strategy. Yeah. But when it comes to actually that, like the marketing activities and mm. stuff, what are the things that you enjoy most? Like, are you kind of, you know, is it more traditional at heart or are you loving the digital revolution? It is no longer a revolution because it's, it's here. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? It's like, so different. When I, I, when I was doing the training courses with small businesses a couple of years ago, um, I said to them when I got my degree, there was one subject in a four-year degree Oh, it was called online marketing. Online. That was it. Oh, online cute. marketing. Yeah. And that was it. And so everything then became learning it on the job. Mm. Now there are whole disciplines that are digital, like digital mm -hmm. marketing based discipline. Mm -hmm. So it, it, the, the, the evolution of our profession in the 20 odd years that we've been doing it is incredible. Right. Yeah. It really is. So I because of where I started and the type of roles that I had straight out of uni, they were with big companies, mm. great brands, big budgets. Like we did some fun stuff. I had a couple of years in an, in an advertising agency in the good old days, you know. So that experience is I'm deeply connected to nostalgically because yeah. we, we filmed $1 million TV campaigns, mm. you know. Like mm. I, those days shooting that stuff is you know, the memories are, are burned in there forever. Yeah. Um, and so I feel there is a little bit lost in a digital sense because mm. it is, it's so much quicker, it's so much faster. Everything's about being quick and easy now, Yeah, man. and it's... Straight to camera, straight I, out the gate. I will say, though, moving away from those big brands and coming, you know, working regionally now, having our own small business, that... Today, it's much easier for small businesses to compete. Ah, oh, dude, the so, barrier is so much lower compared yeah, to what it used to be. I remember, so it's definitely opened shit up. Yes. I remember putting in a call to an, an ex-colleague when I moved up here because this digital stuff, and I was like, how do we, how do I help these businesses compete? Like, who's the head of digital at Super Retail? So all those big brands. And, and he said to me, Vic, you guys have the advantage because mm. you own local content. Like, we as BCF are trying to be... We're, BCF Mackay is nothing against Tackle World Mackay. Mm. They own that space. Mm. And, it, and I was like, you know what? They actually do because these working for a big organisation, you're trying to localise yourself in 700 locations across the country. You just don't own it. It's not authentic. It's not genuine. It's but, challenging, man. We've got a client with, yeah. well, think of one in particular because we do so much for them and they're in all these different areas mm. and stuff. And it's just like... Yeah, getting that local. Like, we can do filler till the cows yeah. come home, but their local it's stuff, crack it. far out, yeah. it's challenging. Yeah. yeah, and so I do think that it's... So while the big stuff and big campaign work, I said, is, is, I loved it, mm. um, it's so much easier for small businesses to be competitive now because they have those digital tools and they are quicker, they are cheaper. You know, they are... You know, they, they, it's easier to upskill yourself, and I'm sure a lot of so businesses are going. Man. Oh no, it all feels so confusing. Yeah, yeah. But you can upskill yourself or your team to tackle to tackle that. And we've done that in our business. I could do, I could do all the marketing for Cool Chain Mackay. Shameless mm. plug. Um, <laughs> take it, take it, Cool Chain Mackay. Thanks. Um, but I don't because I can, you know, upskill our team to be able to take that on mm. and do it. Um, and I have, and I love it. And it's resume building. If you, if you can't create content in this day and age with this conversation yesterday at work, be that for LinkedIn page or as a personal, you know, brand, if you can't create content in some way, shape or form, um, it's a gap in your resume. Mm. It really is. Oh, I mean, and like who doesn't have a little side channel or something? Even like my boyfriend and I have a little side food channel on Insta. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. I do marketing for a living and, and even I've got this, little, you know what yeah. I mean? Like everyone's got their little extra thing that they're doing on the yeah. side. And yeah, you're right. Creating content is something that anyone can be doing. And it's not going anywhere. Mm. But it also just makes it super competitive. It does. Yeah. It does. Okay, cool. So... What is the simplest way that you describe marketing to people? These are good questions because I had to, when I decided to write this training course a couple of years ago, the target for it was small businesses mm -hmm. and small business owners in particular because, you know, when you're a small business owner, you wear all the hats, mm -hmm. like all of them. And marketing tends to be one that, I don't know, we don't have to do it if you don't want to. Like mm. you have to do your payroll, you have to do super, you have to do HR, but you don't have to do marketing if mm. you don't want to. Yeah, you have to do ops, you have to keep the fucking lights on yeah. and the wheels turning, etc. Yep. There's no but regulation. Do you have to put out socials nah. today? Nah. If the government required us to yeah. 
You just report on it in <laughs> order to get... government regulation. You would Are do you it. posting socials at least three times a week? Correct. No, I'm sorry, here's your fine. Yes, exactly. We would do it, but we don't. So it does tend to fall down the list if it's not your natural thing that mm. you like to do. Um, and even as a marketing person, like, I know, it's fucking hard to put yourself out there, man. Yeah. I can force my clients to do it over and over again and, like, butt heads with my friends and make them be like, you know, put, like, you know, you yeah. did this awesome thing, tell people. Yeah. But for me, I can't do that for yeah. me. It's so hard for yourself. Yes, yes, it is. So I came, there was an analogy um, that kind of stuck with me. I was working with the legends out at Croker's Trucks mm -hmm. um, and they were taking me through their um, workshop. And I was out there to do sort of a fundamental what is marketing. Like they just said, can you just come and teach us some stuff? Because they actually had someone slide a $30,000 brand proposal to them that mm. they were like, we just don't know what we're getting for this. It was TV, radio, you know, it's a few years ago. And um, so we're walking through the workshop showing me what, what they do. And there's, you know, trucks lined up being serviced and impressive walls of tools and toolboxes and people fixing them. And I kind of, that picture sat with me when we went into their boardroom and I said to them, just like your service people down in that workshop, as a marketer or, or the person who does marketing in your business, you you have to identify the problem. So that truck pulls in, that person diagnoses what, what is wrong mm. with it mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. So they determine You don't just pull out the spanner and start away. <laughs> And then they go to that really impressive wall of tools and they find the right tool to fix that problem. So they're not just swinging spanners and Except hoping marketing, for the best. We get to use a whole bunch of tools. Yeah. And so essentially the marketing bit is the diagnosing the problem mm. and knowing what, so knowing the audience, knowing the truck, mm -hmm. but then going to pick a tool. There's a suite of tools. There's PR, there's advertising, there's paid advertising, there's, you know, there's social media, there's organic and paid social media, there's events, there's there is sales promotions. There is a world of different tools. And it's just growing. That you just match up to the problem. Mm. Um, and so that toolbox analogy um, is quite handy because a lot of time people think marketing equals advertising mm. or paid advertising. I have mm. to spend some money. And you don't necessarily. Like a lot of the time. 100% agree. When you go and work out what you're actually trying to do, the solution isn't paying money for anything or you need to get your house in order first oh thank you can we before, just say that again <laughs> before you go inviting Vicky. people over get your party. house in order get people in order. before you do any yes. kind especially paid advertising especially please don't throw money away yeah. uh, so that one feel that deeply helpful. in my soul yeah. <laughs> So, and because for I small love that analogy, owners, by the way, that is yeah, so, they, that's very clever. I just see sometimes, particularly, there's like sharks in our industry, right? Most of them seem to be that way. And so they're worried. And if they haven't been burned before, they're worried about being burned. Mm. So it's a big deal to, to pull money out of your pocket as a small business owner. Oh, that's not to say even as big businesses, you've got to, you know, you've got to know what you're spending your money on. You've got more zeros in the budget. But... You have to, you have to know. And it's like even, you know, it's like, you know, local providers and stuff like that. I think everyone tries to do their best, the best yeah. way that they can or yeah. whatever. But in marketing, it's just the online stuff mm. that grabs people. You know, like the amount of times I get forwarded through from someone like, oh, we've been offered this SEO mm. package and stuff. Looking and I'm like, website, you're not ranking high enough. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I get like probably four or five of yeah. those a day. Yeah. And I'm like, they're looking at my website. Yeah. I'm like, it's a marketing website yeah. that talks about yeah. SEO and stuff. And you're here going, oh, we can do your website for you. I'm like, you could do better. Yeah. <laughs> Do better, Jade. You're undermining me. <laughs> Taking my confidence away. But you know what I mean? Like it is, there's just so much of an onslaught mm. for people. And quite generally, they don't know what's, what's up or down change, or which, what's, what, do, what, yeah, what do I do? Exactly. And so many times I've had people come to me the same, what do I do? Do I take this package? And I'm like, well, what do you, what do you want? And yeah. I guess, I guess. <laughs> and I'm so annoyed to people because they're like, should I do this? And I'm like, Ooh, what are your goals? Yeah. What are you trying to do? And it's yeah. like, yeah, but I should do that. And like, no, no. And I think one that of comes so much later. the other broken record really is that any marketing plan, marketing activity, well, a marketing plan is subservient to a business plan. Mm. So there is no marketing yes. until you have like, so what do you want to do? Do you want to increase sales? Do you want a deeper profit margin? Do you want more staff? I was going like, to say, are you, you looking for a recruitment pipeline? Are you going to be launching something yeah. new in the next year? Yeah. Are you talking about, you know, taking out into a different location? Yeah. Are you going to be changing, upgrading workshops? Yes. Like, 
What's the business, business fucking plan. doing? Yes. Marketing should support it. Yeah, yeah. 100%. So, yeah, marketing plans are subservient to a business plan. That's business why they sit first. in a business plan. Yeah. 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 I mean, as much as I may not like, you know, like government templates and that kind of mm. stuff, like oh. I created my own business yeah. and marketing templates and stuff, but even mine works that way. <laughs> 100%. 100%. Um, yeah. Okay. So, to you, what is the essence of marketing then? Is it important? Do we even need it? What is, what is marketing to a business? Um, it's the thing that makes you stand out from a crowd. Really? Like if you, you can be great at your books and you have to be, you can be, you know, you're Love that gets a thumbs up. <laughs> well it done, great at your books. But, you know, like, is your, is that really going to help you stand out from a crowd? And we all know businesses and you look at a small business sphere where that small business owner actually is like us, knows it, understands their customer, is mm. marketing is a thing, it kind of flows naturally for them mm. and then their business just more naturally stands out from the crowd. Mm. Um, so, of, you know, all of the business disciplines we need and we have to wear, particularly as small business owners, it's the marketing bit that makes you stand out from the crowd because, like we said before, it's the bit you don't have to do, you know. But so when you do, you do do it, it and you do it well, yeah. and you do it to the right people, yeah. it kind of has an effect. It is, yeah. So um, I think that's why it's that's why it's important. So 100%, it is important. Um, is it tough to keep up with these days? No, <laughs> super easy. What do you even mean? Um, Five new apps probably just came yeah, out the last breath. Look, if any one more person asks me how they're going to use TikTok, I have zero idea. Right? Is where I tap out. There's other younger, smarter people that can tell you about that bit. I've been too far out of the game for too long in that space. <laughs> um, but yeah, a hundred percent, it is. It's the thing that will that will really leapfrog you in your business. Mm. Mm. And I think people get like, I understand that if you don't feel comfortable or confident in something, you don't want to spend time or money on it. I'm the same. I'm not going to get out there and start swinging a spanner at my car. That would be the furthest thing ever, ever, ever from my mind. So yeah. I completely get reluctance. Yeah, I get yeah, yeah. that the, there's an analysis paralysis like, type thing. Mm, but yeah. it's one of those things where like, if I don't fucking fix the car, mm. it's not going to go. And you, you know, can if you own... don't do marketing in some way, yeah. the business is not going to go. <laughs> yeah. And you have to know, like we have to know enough about our cars to maintain them ourselves. But there's expert things, Jade. <laughs> Go and see Marie at Treadwell Tires. I was going to say, no, I, I have people, there are people who do that. <laughs> yeah. for, I, I, I don't do that. We should know how to do ourselves. And I think it's <laughs> okay, similar, Dad. another analogy, right? Is it there's, there's experts out there, we will always need experts, but there is really no excuse to not be upskilling yourself mm. at a really basic level or someone in your team mm. to be able to do a so fair bit of yourself. Available. Because if you know more, then you know more. So you can make more be informed decisions correct. about things. It's yeah. not even knowing more so that you can, like we have to come along to our yeah. training sessions who literally say, I'm not here because I'm now going to run meta ads. Yeah. I am here so mm -hmm. that I can understand it and I can see whether this has value to my business. And if someone's doing it for me, I yeah. can better understand what I need and what I'm getting, etc. Better understand what you're looking for in someone you're recruiting. Mm -hmm. So in our recruitment, I actually need someone who is going to have some content creation skill and ability. Um, so it's not no more to do more, it's no more to know more. more. Yeah. yeah, and it just, having that base level of understanding, you know, knowledge is power. You mm -hmm. will just feel more confident in this space. The sharks can, you know, you can keep them away, mm -hmm. you can keep them at bay. And I think as a, as a business owner, if you are small, in small business, you do, it, it's on you to be a generalist. You have to be well-rounded. Mm -hmm. And if you find marketing is your um, weakness, then you gotta, you have to upskill. It doesn't mean you have to do it. You just have to know more about it. And it's interesting you say like, um, you know, standing out from the crowd too, mm. because I know that that kind of language, that phrasing can mean different things mm. to different people. Yep. Like, you know, standing out from the crowd to me just means that you're recognizable, you're yep. memorable. If I'm thinking of a mechanic, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, thinking whatever sort of mm. thing, it doesn't mean I'm thinking of you as being show-offy oh, no. or um, boasting mm. or anything like that. Spending the most amount of money. Having exactly. Of, I yeah. think people seem to equate sometimes standing mm. out from the crowd as being the person who's a loud mouth yeah. saying, I'm so great. Bright and bold. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I've got yeah. this client at the moment who is 
just one of the loveliest people I've met in the heavy industrial space yeah. who so genuinely is like walking around his workshop and stuff just loves it so, like a kid yeah. just genuinely yeah. loves it space. talking to his um his staff and everything like them you know like yeah loves his team loves his work it was just it's so nice to be mm. working with people who give a shit about what they do <laughs> and not just for the money especially in heavy mm. industry sure. um and he you know so some of the stuff they do is like they already do things like staff awards mm. and massive sponsorships for very big causes and everything and and I'm like, this is it's not on your any of your socials. What's yeah. happening? And his missus is like, yeah, I've been trying to get him to do it. He refuses to put these things onto socials because he feel because that's not why Show he boating. do it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I'm like, look, I get it. There's certain like sponsorships that yeah. we do yeah. that no one except do. the people in the team know. Yeah. Because we do it for us, yeah. and that's fine. But at the same time, like, and because recruitment is now becoming mm -hmm. an issue for them, even. Mm -hmm. um, like you have to actually put yourself out there yeah. so that people just get us like understand how cool you are well, it's part of their not story. to showboat it's but to say how story. cool you are yeah. you know it's yeah but it's hard i'm trying mm. to get him over that yeah he's such a humble guy yeah and that's really beautiful and mm. i don't want to take that away from him but he needs to fucking yeah <laughs> you share out. that you have to yeah. give it some amplification because the right? result will be there like mm. it's true it's all authentic it's very genuine and i think you can tell the difference between Author, like people can sniff BS a mile away so mm. people will sniff that out and that's the difference between showboating and actually just being really solid, solid. in your competitive space and being seen to be it might be that you're seen to be a leader in that space or mm. that you're actually just killing it in sales and that's quite obvious mm. or you know like it could be that when you stand out from the crowd, you know, even if I think about when I drive around Paget and the difference between some of the the way that the big buildings or big warehouses mm. are presented. Yeah, and I just yeah. think I had this one client and I always used to say to them, the presentation of your building mm. is it, it just represents what you do yeah. with the yeah. work you do. You, you say you take pride in it in all of your marketing, uh, you can tell and see, by and the way me, that building is presented. That's why I think to me, marketing is actually, I fucking hate this word so hard, but it is so holistic Yeah. because it's it is, it's not just the advertising you do. Mm -hmm. It's how someone answers the phone. Yep. It's how you do your job. Yep. It's how your office is presented. Yes. It's all of those things that all marketing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's all the mark. Like if you tell me that you really care about things, mm -hmm. but then you can't be bothered to reply to my email. Yeah. Yeah. No the truth world. in marketing. Yeah, and you know, I, this is another, another analogy that I use in that training is that your brand is more than your logo. Mm. So a logo is a logo is a logo. It mm -hmm. is words, colors, motifs, whatever. It but is it's a, logo. a design. It's a design it's a element. Design. And it is brand is a all conversation. The things that yeah. go with it. Mm. So it's the person wearing that. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> you told me not to do that. I told you I told you had my one hands. job. Don't, Don't touch smack the microphone. The microphone. <laughs> I smacked the microphone, sorry. Um, but it's the person wearing the uniform mm. with the logo on it. And the, you know, like you said, the, the way that the phone is answered and the way that the building is presented. So you can slap any logo on anything. You mm. can refresh your logo until the cows come home, but it's everything else that you do, that everyone who works in your business does, the quality of the products that you sell um, is all of that. And that's, that's the holistic the bit. Mm. It's the brand mm. bit. You know, it's more than a logo and people get caught up on the logo. Mm. Oh they? god, yes. Make it bigger, make it smaller. Mm. Just different shapes. Put shape every piece. single thing into it. I'm like, your logo's never going to get <laughs> seen by itself, up. man. And it's like with 50 million other things. Yeah. No, no, shove everything I want my business represented. To anyway, that's besides it's the a point. Whole another episode. <laughs> okay, so finish off. I want to go through what are your top tips for business owners. You've been, you're a small business owner yourself. You're on chamber. Mm -hmm. You've worked in agencies, big and small. You know, so you've been client side, yeah. and you know all this different experience that you bring to the table what is it that you know if you could just sit down with face to face with a small business owner mm -hmm. and say just focus on these things and yeah. all will be okay the, it, I, I don't know how many times I've said it today maybe a few but you have to know your audience mm -hmm. you have to 
No, it, in everything that you do, like in anything, every conversation you're about to have, every email you're about to write, who is this going to? Because it's, it's about them, it's not, not about, about you. you. Oh my God, that's one of my favorite sayings. Uh, it's not about it's you, not about it's about you. them. It's about them. Your so, website, not about you. you. Do it's they about like them? It? Yeah, yeah. I've, had, I've, had, <sighs> I've had a client before, I put a campaign in front of him, he was say, so, let's say 65-ish year old man. Hmm. The target audience was middle-aged women mm -hmm. to buy pretty things and he said I don't like it and I said perfect I don't care yeah I don't get it you don't like it what I'd like you to do is take that and show a selection of the women that you relevant want to people. buy these products <laughs> then come back to me mm -hmm. and I got an email that said that's all approved to go ahead yeah because he'd clearly done that he didn't like it but I didn't care because this is not directed at you, you. Oh, I love that I, I love that you don't like it that's, that's perfect <laughs> I um a friend of mine we were coming up with a name for something and I came up with this idea and she's like oh I asked my husband and he didn't like it and I was like perfect right he's the opposite <laughs> of the target audience yeah. so I think we nailed yeah, it <laughs> So knowing your audience has to be the center of everything and you have to you have to know their pain points. What problems are you trying to help them solve? Mm. So Give us an example. What's an audience and a pain point? Just to really make it super simple oh, for people. Let's go back to the trucks. So right. you've got you've got someone, so those guys they'd have like fleets of trucks. So they a transport company therefore becomes a really important customer group for them because how so they've got a fleet of trucks they need to service those trucks they're probably likely to have to turn them over and buy new ones at some point in time mm -hmm. what can we do to help make that process a lot easier for them mm. things like service agreements put them on a service agreement tell mm. them give them a maintenance schedule about what is the best way to so do instead this instead of them saying to you i it's like going to your hairdresser yeah. i so my previous hairdresser um retired and i've gone to new in the last few years and she's only just starting to learn now that i don't give a flying fuck what color my hair is <laughs> and so i would go to my old hairdresser and yeah. it took a while yeah. but she got that return up and she's like i'm gonna do your hair this, this, this today yeah. and i'm like perfect okay. Good. Done. That's exactly what I want. Yeah. I want you to decide my hair. Yeah. I don't want to have to do it. Yeah. Mm. And you might do that process iteratively. So when you're doing your business plan, it's a bigger, it's, you're talking about bigger things, right? Mm. So you, you'll chunk out your target audiences and you'll, you'll put a few things in there. But if you just are going to go and do um, like a cool chain. So we've, we're Pi Day Friday. We've been rolling that last Friday of every month for a couple of years. It's sometimes we use it as a, as a bigger promotional tool. We might have a, um, you know, a sales rep come up and we decide to, to do something different with it or we just roll it through as a bit of a customer loyalty thing. But um, every now and again, we go, okay, well, we've got, it's coming up to tax time. So we've got, we know our audience quite well, but mm. we're just going to tweak. So the pain point around tax time is they might need to stock the vans with tools or you're an apprentice mm. and it's actually, you'll get a tool, tool allowance. Mm. Let's, you know, let's help them out. And we've got to clear some stock before end of financial year. So, blah, blah, blah. so Works for everyone. you do it, you don't just do it once and it's a set and forget. Like everything is like, okay, well, who is, the, who is the audience? And like I said, our audience is pretty solid. It stays. But their pain points will change. The mm. problems we're helping them solve will change. Um, we set up this grab-and-go gear, this little stand, mm. right, near the, right near the register of all of the products. So um, Brett's um, customers are like they're tradies, so they're fixed air conditioning, refrigeration, right? So mm -hmm. like a, a porters for that trade. Um, so they all come in and they'll get the part that they need because something's broken down but they've got vans and utes full of tools and things that they need like consumables more so mm. and so we just created this grab and go gear stand mm. put some signs on it and i got him to walk around and say because he's a tradie mm -hmm. what's the things what do you run out of in the van yeah what's Dust the shit tape? that you always need more Silicon. no matter what or it'd actually be great to have four of them because you can have one in this yeah. bag one in yeah. the front thing one here i broke one, that on yeah. the last job shit that's mm. right i've got it so this mm. grab and go gear and it is like it's a winner mm. and it's a winner yes because we sell stuff off it but the, the boys and some girls love it mm. because they, you see them they go oh, shit that's right i need more because otherwise you're they're solving a get problem that they the forgot site, they even had <laughs> and they're gonna go oh man i need a duct tape and mm. i don't have duct tape and now i have to pack everything up get down off the roof and go back to cool chain and mm -hmm. get duct tape but not today because good old bretto had it on the grab and go stand mm. and i'm sweet so some of those ideas are not going to be your best, you know, you're not, we're not going to retire off the grab and go <laughs> gear stand, but 
we got happy customers, you know? And yeah. who knows how much that's generated, that little grab and go stand. But and just that return thing. customer base too, sort of thing. Like you're just mm. rounding out that experience for them. You yeah. just help, you're there to help. You have a business because you want to help. help people. Yeah, you are. Fundamentally, yeah. yeah. So okay. Is that top tip? So, so know your know audience. audience. Find, find their, their pain points. points. Work out where to find them. Find them. Yeah, find them. And find them where they're hanging out. Mm. Like, where are they hanging Don't out? Don't force them to be where you are. Go to where <laughs> they are. Go to where they are. Oh, gosh. Yeah. yeah. And I build think, it and they will come. Yeah. Man, that's never worked, no. ever. I don't even know where that saying comes from because it's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> and look, back in the good old days, we used to find people in, like, New Idea and the Women's mm. Weekly and on certain TV channels and, you know, that's not so much anymore. Um, but it's more it's, it's certainly more digital's way more direct mm -hmm. to people mm -hmm. um and it's more measurable like you can you can see your performance really so you can mm -hmm. decide whether you're in the right spot or not mm -hmm. if you're saying the right thing or not um but if if all of that is a little bit too much then you can i'd say again upskill yourself or someone in your team um to feel more confident in this space and if you you can't do that for free or, you, you know, you could find someone. So mm. someone like you and all of your oh, training, the, then, the training programs Google that I and did. Facebook and stuff, they have massive free training. online training yeah. certifications yeah. and shit, man. There is so much available. Yeah. So you can help find someone to help you even just crank that over. Just mm. get it started. Because um, sometimes just getting started just is part of it started. too, man. Like yeah. it's once you actually start doing it and I think it's them paying attention to the result. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually going, okay, what is this generating for us? Yeah. Not just as in like numbers, like click throughs or whatever sort of thing, but have we noticed that there's steadily been, in, you know, increasing inquiry or mm. is it actually not having any effect? Any is it something I need to do for a few months before there's a, you know what I mean? Like mm. I just find marketing so much of it's trial and error. Yeah, it is. And you can do that with a lot less risk these days. Mm. You know, like you, yeah, can, exactly. you can have a play with something. You don't need to go and invest thousands of dollars in a whole, you know, full page new newspaper paper ad for four weeks and hope that it has an impact and mm. you burned your money really really um if it doesn't so but and i guess the final piece other than know your audience um is that marketing plan is subservient to business planning mm. so if you don't have even a rough idea of what you want to achieve in your business um a, a few metrics mm. then you're not gonna know one you're just not gonna know what uh, marketing to even try and do i'm a planner so i i love doing my annual plan like mm. you know i've got my five-year strategy i break it down into a 12-month thing each a year like that's fun for me i really enjoy it whereas like such a friend a of mine basically <laughs> i am such a fucking nerd man trust me i've <laughs> always been <That's> great. <laughs> but like i've got a mate who's been in business longer than i do and he's like i've never had a business plan and i'm like okay cool like you don't have to formulate and write Some things down and shit swing it. but i'm like what is it that you want to achieve and he's like i don't really know yeah but then we talk a bit more and it's like oh well we've been implementing this system to streamline this or do I said yeah you do you your do. plan you you might not be a full-on yeah. planner like it's I just am. Intuitive. Yeah, exactly. Mm. But you've got your ideas and you, you sort of got an idea of what yeah. you're doing. You're not just turning up each day going, mm. fuck, hope this works out. <laughs> I mean, you sort of do that anyway. You but do that anyway. <laughs> you really do. Oh, dear. Yeah, we, uh, there's, yeah, there's a lot. But those top tips, I think, really. And they're probably the things that have followed me through. Like I said, my career is drastically different to how it started out. Mm. But I am still to this day. Having the same conversations, mm. you know, mentoring and upskilling people in our team. Um, who's your audience? What are you trying to say to them? You know, make it as easy as possible for them. Mm. You know, this is about them. Yeah. I have this conversation with my team yeah. all the time and it's, I love when people get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's just like the idea that writing a two or three line email is such a throwaway thing because we do it a hundred times a day. Mm. But it's like, no, no. If you do that well, yes. if you just take 30 seconds to think yeah. and then you do it and then another 30 seconds to read before you send, mm. you could drastically improve that interaction that project that outcome that relationship yeah you, you know what i mean just because you put in a modicum of effort yeah. to it yeah mm. even God. in the space mm. now you know economic development and i sometimes have to do submissions to government now yeah. you know? but again Fun. there's someone and i it's a real person on the other end it's a real end. person on the other end yep. and as much as we might find it dry to write mm. there's some poor sod in canberra that has to read being on the other side of getting of submissions them. for things yeah. Yeah. And it's like, that's no matter what I write, like people go like, even our terms and conditions on our quotes are mm. like funny and quirky. Yes. I did it once. I proof it maybe once a year. Right. It was one time I did it, 
but just putting in that effort yeah. so that for anyone who does read that it's not super boring because yeah. you get it seemed like with resumes and stuff yeah. man you know what I mean like yeah. you read like Think 50 of the fuckers it. and you're yeah. just like dude if you're getting bored and tuning yeah. out halfway through your resume imagine how I feel after, after 49 of them already yeah exactly. yeah. Mm. yeah so it's in the yeah, it's, a, it's really important to just know who you're talking to and um, taking the time to craft that you know that to really get it it's less is more is really mm. so important mm -hmm. in marketing as well because it's not just about more and more and more especially for those of us who are naturally verbose <sighs> you have to, I say I laugh all the time because I speak like I talk a lot using Same a lot of words in a day mm. but what is actually that's something I really love to do. And one of the girls at work told me yesterday, you get a high out of this, don't you? And I said, yeah, like taking something and... Condensing. Yeah, mm. taking three Stripping pages it, and yeah. putting it into three yeah. small sentences. Mm. What is it? Who is it talking to? And what are they going to get out of it? Mm -hmm. That's it. And it was like, hey, these are high. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it takes... And when I was consulting, I said, you don't pay me for the number of Word words counts. yeah no. you actually pay me to do the big like look at it all and, and then just give you this, this, this very is the, simple this is the essence yeah 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 boil mm. it all down mm. so yeah i use lots of spoken words not as many <laughs> written words yes yes oh well your spoken words were very much appreciated oh, today be a bit of thank waffle you for in there. so much no you did not even <laughs> that was awesome thank you so much for coming i really do appreciate That's it man right. sorry for hitting the microphone that's right i did it too so oh, good and this is my 110th episode and i hit the microphone so Excellent. i can expect anything that's from oh, you thanks. first thanks <laughs> thank you as well for joining us and um hope you tune in for the next one too cheers Thanks for listening to this episode of Marketing and Margaritas. Find more free marketing tips, tricks and laughs at rebelnation.com.au.